Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in today's video, we're answering a viewer question. Kateri S. asks, I've always been told that you can't put pineapple in jello because it won't set. Why? Unless you've managed to make it this far in life without setting foot in a store, you're probably aware that Jell-O, or probably known as Jelly by British people like myself, is a genericization of the brand Jell-O, which itself was derived from the word gelatin. Gelatin is a protein derived from collagen via a process called hydrolysis. This is a process that breaks apart the bonds of this protein with water. While hydrolysis may sound complicated, it's actually a simple matter of boiling collagen-rich animal byproducts, usually bones, connective tissue, and skin, in water for many hours in order to break it down. The resulting broth is then carefully strained before the water is evaporated, leaving behind gelatin, which can either be pressed into sheets or sold as a powder. Given that it is made from animal byproducts, gelatin and products containing it aren't considered to be vegetarian, and as a result, there are several plants based alternatives, such as agar derived from algae and carrageenan derived from seaweed available on the market. You can actually see our video on why seaweed is sometimes used in the making of ice cream to learn more about that. Though commonly thought of as being modern, gelatin-based foodstuffs have existed since at least the 15th or 16th centuries. Notably, in the late 17th century, a Frenchman named Denis Papon invented a device he dubbed the digester of bones. Marketing genius on that one, Papon. Papon's original invention was to create a device not too dissimilar from a modern pressure cooker, which utilized steam in order to boil down bones either for thickening gravies or creating a paste that could be readily consumed by the poor. Despite his noble intentions for the less than affluent among us, the device ended up being too expensive for all but the wealthiest individuals to afford. In the end, the French and eventually the English elite became enthralled with the jellies that it produced, with one English observer noting, the hardest bones of beef and mutton were made as soft as cheese, producing an incredible quantity of gravy, and for close of all, a jelly made from the bones of beef, which makes a good relish, the most delicious I have ever tasted. The English are also credited with creating one of the earliest recipes known that contains gelatin, a dish called calves foot jelly, which was, unsurprisingly, made from calves feet, though the feet of deer, sheep, or another similar animal could be substituted if necessary. The exact recipe states, take two calves feet and add them to one gallon of water, boil down to one quart, strain, and when cold, skim off the fat, add this to the white of six or eight eggs well beaten, a pint of wine, half a pound of sugar loaf, and the juice of four lemons and let them be well mixed. Boil the whole for a few minutes, stirring constantly, and then strain through a flannel. This forms a very nutritious article of diet for the sick and for those recovering from disease. The wine may be omitted or added according to choice. Originally designed as a food for invalids, like many other gelatin-based foods, the dish became something of a delicacy among the upper classes. Later, its supposed high nutritional value saw various gelatin-based foods become popular with soldiers during the Napoleonic Wars. Alright, so where do pineapples come into this and why can't you put them in jello? Well, to begin with, it's not true that you can't put pineapples in jello. You just shouldn't put unprocessed pineapples into it unless you like the jello to stay in its liquid form. You see, since gelatin is a protein, it is very susceptible to breaking down into its amino acid building blocks when it encounters enzymes known as proteases. As a result of this breakdown, the proteins are unable to tangle together to create a partially solid structure. The bottom line is, without this linking, the jello never sets. In regards to pineapples, they contain bromelain, which itself contains sulfur hydroprotease enzymes. As such, gelatin with unprocessed pineapple added to it will simply not set. However, since heating typically renders the protease enzymes in bromelain inactive, canned pineapple can be added to jello as it is heated sufficiently as part of the canning process. So you might be wondering at this point if there are any other common foodstuffs that similarly prevent jello from setting. Well, the short answer is yes. Anything containing protease enzymes is a no-no in your jello. This includes several fruits such as papaya, mango, guava, papaw, and kiwi, as well as figs and ginger root. In addition to this, protease enzymes are also found in broccoli, mushroom, spinach, wheat, and soybeans, none of which you're very likely to add to jello. But well, at least you now know. Finally, meat tenderizer, which is usually made from either the 
aforementioned bromelain or papain, derived from papayas, will, of course, stop jello from setting. As with pineapple, however, if the food items in question are first heated sufficiently to inactivate the offending enzymes, in the case of bromelain heated to above 70 degrees Celsius, that's 158 degrees Fahrenheit, they will then be fine to use in your latest jello creation. And now for some bonus facts. Technically, Jell-O is actually alive. That's at least according to a 1974 experiment performed by Dr. Adrian Upson. Dr. Upson attached an EEG electroencephalogram machine to a dome of lime green Jell-O. The Jell-O produced alpha waves in much the same way an awake and alive human would do. This set the science world aflutter. But what Dr. Upton was really trying to prove is that an EEG should not be the only method used to determine if a human is alive or not. Because the reality is we all know that Jell-O is not alive. And now for another bonus fact. Since chemicals like bromelain break down protein, they're remarkably effective at tenderizing meat, and there's some tenuous evidence to support the idea that eating them can aid in the digestion of protein. Whether there is actually any positive effect or not, pineapple and similar protease-rich fruits have become popular with bodybuilders for this reason. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, I'd like to say I've got a brand new channel. It's called Biographics. We do biographies of notable people from the past and the present. They're longer form, about 20 minutes. Find a link to it in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.